Hello, welcome back to another video. I'm planning on tackling a very, very big illustration that I've been working on for quite a few days uh, and I'm finally getting around to painting the real thing. Um, a lot of planning has gone into the illustration that you'll see me doing in this video, so I thought I'd just show you a little bit of the planning so you can see and know the whole process and how a little idea can turn into a whole illustration. So I will start by showing you the little thumbnail sketches that I did. Here's my sketchbook. I started by doing some little sketches. I'll quickly tell you the idea. So basically, I've been a bit insect mad recently. Um, if you've been watching all my videos or looking at my Instagram, you'll see that I've been drawing a lot of little insects. Um, yeah, they're all over the place. And I wanted to put all those insects into one big illustration. So I started sketching out some ideas. I knew I wanted it to be full of plants and full of like, lots of wiggly lines. I've gotten into wiggles as well. Um, you see like just wiggly plants. I really like them as well so I wanted insects and wiggly plants. So I started nailing lots of ideas. Um, weren't too keen on any of these sketches that I did but I, then I did this sketch which I quite liked and I, I wanted to include sort of the idea that the insects had built onto the plants like they'd built little ladders and little platforms and I tried again the following day and did some more thumbnails and then these ones I was really happy with and I was kind of stuck between the two of these yeah and then I did another sketch and I really liked this little worm coming up out of the ground so I knew I wanted to include that so I really liked this little thumbnail and this one so I took them both for I couldn't decide between the two of them so I decided to draw both of them a little bit bigger so I could get a better idea of what I liked this one did include the ground um, and I wanted to make sure I had a worm coming up out of the ground so this one didn't really work with what I wanted to do so then I tried again and did this one and made sure to include the ground um, so I could get my worm in. I'll show you the line work on screen and um, before I shaded it in. I decided to shade it in just to get a better feel for if it would work because I knew I wanted the wiggles on the outside to be a sort of frame to go like taking you into the piece um, so I just wanted to check that that sort of idea worked. For the composition I was thinking framing to bring you into the lightest centre in the middle of the piece um, and just kind of have everything pointing towards this light section here. I decided to trace it out a bit bigger to get a better sense for the scale because when you draw things smaller what seems like a tiny gap on this when you draw it bigger you realise hold on this tiny gap I had is now this really big gap which needs filling with something so yeah I just drew it bigger and then tried to fill in all the awkward gaps I had um, with extra vines and extra plants and then I took it into Photoshop where I coloured it in. I'll show you a little bit of the process now. I know I go into way too much detail when it comes to like the colour mock because basically I'm just colouring it on Photoshop so when it comes to painting the real thing I know exactly what colours to use and it's a much smoother process and I'm basically just copying what I've already done at that point. Um, I know I go into way too much detail on the colour mock but I would just rather have every everything decided before I start painting instead of like messing around when I'm painting and making mistakes I just like to have make I just like to make the painting process as smooth as I can possibly make it and I do that by going into way too much detail on the colour mock I mean this digital piece if I wanted to I could have carried on for a bit and maybe made it into a finished piece but like for me I personally like my work to be traditional um, so that's why I don't do that. I really like the way it turned out. It was a lot of trial and error and it took me about two days. Um, but yeah, hopefully it should make the painting process now really easy and just basically just copying what I've already done. Um, this entire process to get to this stage has taken around around a week. I mean, I've not been working like all day on it, just like a couple hours a day. Um, I mean, the doing the digital colouring, I was on, I was doing like full days on that. But like all this sketching stuff, I weren't doing, you know, I weren't slaving over it. it. Takes a lot of planning to get to the the stage that I'm at now. You know, it doesn't just magically happen. A lot of planning goes into it. What I'm up to now is I'm starting to work on the big painting and a little bit of it has already been painted because I started working on it and it got way too hot and I had to stop and I decided I'll work on it 
when it's a little bit cooler um, and I have the fan. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll show you a little bit of the process before it got too hot. <laughs> Um, all I've done so far is put on the masking fluid, that's what you can see, all these like light yellow bits, that's all masking fluid. Um, just put that on all the lightest areas, which I wanted to like keep light. Um, if you don't know what masking fluid is, basically you paint it down and then you can paint on top of it with your watercolour and then you can peel it up and you have the white paper underneath. Um, and then I also started to paint the background in very very lightly, but it got way too hot and I had to stop. <laughs> so. I'm starting again, well I'm mean, not starting again, I'm starting filming again and I'm going to carry on painting. You've not missed much, I'm going to hand you over to the voiceover and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, welcome to the voiceover section of this video. I thought I would talk a little bit about how I found my style and how I'm still finding my style. I thought that'd just be a quite a nice topic to talk about whilst you're watching me do this painting. Um, just a little bit about the painting before I start talking about that. I did this over the course of, I think it was three days in total, I think uh, probably around 20 hours, maybe 25 hours in total spent painting this. Um, so add that on to however many hours I spent planning it out, probably looking at about 40 hours, 40 hours to make this piece in total. So a lot of work went into it, but I really enjoyed painting it because I'd done so much planning, the painting process was just so smooth. I had a few little hiccups here and there where I was worried I'd gone too dark or um, I was overworking areas, but because I was in, well, I was painting in gouache, I could just you know paint on top of it and start again. And um, for the most part, like to start with, I was working like with my gouache. Well, I was working with a mixture of gouache and watercolors. So for the start, I was working in mainly watercolors, very very light. You can barely even see the paint at the start. I was putting on such light coats. Um, and then the more I painted and the more I built up the color, I started transitioning into gouache because you can get much more saturated colors and. Uh, a little bit more texture with gouache and yeah, that's pretty much how I did it. So hope you enjoy watching the painting process. Right, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about finding my style because this painting for me I feel like has been a style breakthrough. Uh, throughout the whole painting I was questioning, oh is this me, is this what I want my paintings to look like, is this what I want my art to look like, but in the end really happy with it. Like the whole time I was thinking to myself, oh should I use only watercolour and then use coloured pencil to add in all the details and to work up some of the colours because that's usually how I've worked in the past but this time I was like no Emily come on try something new just do a full painting try not to use any coloured pencils and just use gouache pretty much for all the details and yeah there was multiple times where I was like oh no I've made a mistake I should have just done all watercolour but no it worked out in the end I really like the way just a full gouache piece looks and I, I was so tempted so many times like oh I, well I could just do this little line with um, a bit of pencil I'm like no Emily come on don't be lazy get it all done with gouache and I'm proud to say this entire piece is there's not a single bit of coloured pencil on it um, and don't get me wrong I love a bit of watercolour with coloured pencil on top but I just think for me and where the way like the direction that my art is heading in is trying to do full gouache pieces because I just love the way it looks and I love the texture of gouache you know when like especially I don't know if I've painted them yet because I'm not really watching the video as I'm doing this voiceover but the leaves um, in the foreground the really dark leaves I, I really enjoy painting a large area which should be kind of one solid colour but then going in with slight different colour variations and just painting them on top and having it be sort of like a little patchwork of different paints on top of each other yeah and I think it's definitely the direction my style is heading in other than I mean I guess for the past few months I've, I've been quite determined to find a style and to find a direction that I want my art to head in but I've never really been that bothered about it I, I've never really been too stressed about finding a style I've always just thought oh when it comes it comes you know styles come and go they're not set in stone 
But yeah, when I look back at my old art, I think, I can't believe I used to paint like that. Like, oh, that's just not me anymore. Well, that's just, you know, that's just how styles evolve, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I was never really too worried about finding a style. I was just painting how I wanted to paint in that moment and whatever it looks like, I was like, oh, I guess, I guess that's my style. And I've never really thought of myself as someone who has a style and I'm looking back on my work now I'm like I think I kind of did especially I was doing um it was this online thing where these people important people were looking at my work it was this thing I signed up to do with uni um it was like this online thing where all these important art people high up in the art world were like kind of reviewing our portfolio and I remember them saying oh you've got a clear style here and I thought to myself do I? I didn't realise I had a style <laughs> but yeah just hearing these people who were quite who, who had achieved a lot in the art world saying that they, they liked my style and they thought I had a clear style I was like oh right well that's cool I suppose I didn't realise I did because I always like work in so many different medias that I feel like each different media has its own sort of style like my collage looks nothing like my gouache obviously and my like watercolour gouache pieces look nothing like my coloured pencil pieces and I always thought they were just different things completely separate to each other especially over the past few months I suppose my collage I can really see the way that's kind of influencing the rest of my work well it's like when you're doing collage you have to simplify shapes down otherwise you're going to be cutting out the most tiniest little bits of detail so I always simplify down like the shapes of flowers and the shapes of buildings so all the shapes for the most part are just like simple rectangles circles little blobs I never really cut out that much of a complicated shape and yeah I feel like sub subliminably I feel like I'm adding in too many syllables subliminally anyway I've been that has kind of been translating over to my paintings without me fully realising. Like I'll look back and I'll think, oh I used a really simple shape there for the flower when I used to never really do that. I'm like, oh I've drawn that flower exactly like I would if I was collaging. And I just think it's cool to see how something like collaging is affecting my painting work. That's definitely been influencing my style a lot recently without me really realising but now I guess I kind of realise that I'm like oh yeah I guess me putting in so much time and effort into these collage pieces it's like oh this is like this little subsection of my art is having a much wider effect on my art as a whole which is cool. Uh, probably me this time last year would draw much more detailed pieces. I'd always put a lot more detail into my work. Um, I remember say if I was doing, but probably about this time last year I was painting a still life. I remember it was a really detailed still life with loads of, like, it was this table full of food and I remember drawing each bit of food like in so much detail and being really proud of it. Um, but I just know if I was to do that now I would be simplifying all those shapes down. I'd be putting not too much detail in. I obviously still like detail, like this piece I'm doing at the moment is absolutely jam-packed with detail, but I feel I like it in a different way now and it, I, I don't know how to explain this. I prefer the detail to come from there being lots of shapes rather than putting lots of detail into the shapes. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> For example, in this painting, if you look at the actual leaves, they're really simple, they're just blobs. Um, but the detail comes from there just being lots of blobs rather than the detail coming from me drawing every single little vein on the leaf. You know, I, guess, I think you get where I'm coming from, hopefully you do. But in the past, my detail used to come from just really rendering out the painting so it looked more realistic. I guess that's kind of how my style has changed. I'm less realistic these days. I used to draw a lot more realistic and now I'm more um, just simplifying shapes and letting the details and the interest come from the texture of the shape rather than the detail of the shape. Is that interesting to you? I don't know <laughs> but it's just it's interesting to me I've never I feel like I've just had a breakthrough there I finally understand my style I've never been able to describe it before but I think that's I think that's how my style's changed over the past year. Anyway also just looking at other people's work on Instagram I follow so many amazing artists which I see the way they'll paint something and I think oh I want to try and paint a little bit more like they do because I've never really put too much pressure on finding a style somehow accidentally or a little bit on purpose but a little bit without me even realising I've stumbled across this style which I really enjoy as nice as it is to have a style I think it's also important to remember that just because you're drawing that way doesn't mean that's the only way you can draw for the rest of your life it's important to also not be afraid to do something outside your style because I think sometimes styles can be a bit of a trap um, 
I especially know that in, I remember at uni, there was these, a few projects that I did where, I mean, I was happy with the outcome of the project, but I was thinking to myself, oh, I could have pushed myself a bit more and drawn something a bit more outside of my comfort zone and maybe would have had something that I was a little bit happier with. And I remember my teachers would always say to me, uh, it's nice, but we really want to see you do something different and push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And for me, my teachers are just constantly pushing me to do something messy, do something a little bit more gritty because my work can just is just quite pretty <laughs> which I like and I think it's nice to have pretty work but sometimes it's nice to just do some things something a bit different anyway I guess what I'm trying to say is a style is really nice but also you don't want to get trapped in a style and you want to make sure you still you know try something new every now and then because it's important to kind of constantly be well not maybe not constantly but you know every now and then be drawing something different because you don't want to look back on your art and still be drawing the same way that you were drawing like five years ago. Well, at least I, I, I don't want to. I hope that my art is kind of constantly evolving and constantly changing. Um, otherwise I think it gets a bit boring if you're just drawing the same kind of way every single time. That's just my opinion, do what you want. <laughs> Styles are good, but also don't have to draw like that. Draw however you want and switch it up, you know? Styles will come and go. I'm drawing like this at the moment, but who knows what I'll be drawing like in a year probably completely different but I guess I've, I've just style just finds a way to pop up and if you don't have a style you probably do and you just don't realize um, or if you don't have a style at all and you definitely just don't have one it's not wrong with that and um, it would just kind of appear on its own or maybe you don't want a style and you want every single piece to look different but I think having a style is good especially if you're looking to become like a freelance illustrator that's what I want to do at some point hopefully one day that's a dream um, and having a style it just lets clients know what the works will look like that you do for them because they like will hire you because they like your style and if you don't have a style it's a bit like oh what are they gonna get they're not quite sure but yeah it's just really exciting and I'm happy with the style I've got now I don't know did that make sense I've just said all of this off the top of my head and it could be an absolute uh, mess to listen back to um, but I'll try and edit it in a way to have it make sense I hope this has been enjoyable to listen to and you've enjoyed watching me paint hopefully it's been relaxing or maybe you've had had me on whilst you're doing some drawing as well but yeah, as always, it's been lovely to chat to you guys and like I said before, super pleased with this painting. Can't wait to make it into a print. When I do my next shop update, this will definitely be a print in the shop. Not quite sure when that will happen, but it will happen. Yeah, thank you very, very much for watching, listening, watching and listening. I uh, hope you have a lovely day, a lovely week. Goodbye.